Hey, welcome to another edition of Bear Market Vlogs. So what happened with the news? Uh, the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, boom, they raised interest rates by 0.5, so the target rate went to 0.75 to 1, or uh, what was it? Whatever. So, what does it mean for everything? What means they're going to keep raising interest rates? Why do they raise interest rates? Why do they do it? So the market cools off, so you stop wasting your stupid money, okay? So the SP500 stops going up, the NASDAQ stops going up, the Dow stops going up. So what does that mean for us? It means you can't just throw money at these imaginary, I don't even say internet, is the internet real? Is the internet imaginary meta coins and having them go up? The metaverse, NFTs? Like, NFTs, you look back at NFTs and think this is the greatest bubble in history. I mean, history so far, they always have a new bubble that they're creating every single time. But it just is. Like, you thought these imaginary coins that some guy that you don't even know, that, I mean, the rumor was, like, if you're from India, you created coins, and then there are a bunch of other coins that came up. You remember Poon DX? That sounded like Indian. I mean, how many of you would have bet that Poon DX was an Indonesian coin? It's like, what the hell? That was a surprise, wasn't it? One of the greatest surprises of 2018. Um, so what happened this run? Remember, um, let's go back to 2017, 2018. So your portfolio high hit, whatever. A lot of people made it to 100,000. Some people made it to a million. It was rare if you made it to 10 million in 2017. But there are a few. What happened this run? Well, if you were just as DGEN in 2017 betting on imaginary internet coins, you bet on DeFi and then you bet on NFTs. A lot of people missed the DeFi run of 2020, early 2021, but they caught the NFT run from late summer. Um, Actually, August would be midsummer, right? Exactly midsummer. To, um, I guess it only lasted about a month that run, and it sort of faded and chopped. And then in January we got another run, crazy run with Kazuki's and stuff like that. And then Bored Apes went from 32 ETH in November all the way up to, uh, I guess 153 ETH or. So, something like that before that airdrop sell-off of the deeds so we had, we had a lot of crazy runs in 100x plays and we were lucky enough to have those so the disappointing part of the bear market is we're not going to see a lot of those plays unfortunately what does it mean you can't just throw money at these things and have it go up because like in stocks like in investments in bull markets Investors realize they're having more risk to hold the money than to just throw it at startup companies, um, mid-level, I don't know what they're called, uh, companies not trading, private companies, and have it just go up 10x, 100-fold, because the market is just it's retracting people stop believing I mean it's obvious there's only so high you can build your your Jenga tower remember Jenga okay in real life you can only build your tower so high again but just like Jenga your, your tower only goes up so high before you gotta you gotta do whatever you want um, what was the name of that <laughs> that law it's not a law but the inverse square whatever or the, the more the higher you build something the more resources it's sort of like the the economics version of the physics version of the inverse square law or depreciating returns where the more you put into something the less you get out so the higher you try to build something the more resources you soil and cement and iron whatever you used for your towers uh, aluminum no nobody's building an aluminum tower but whatever you use the more you put in, the less you get. It's getting less high. It's 
going up here. Instead of boom, it's going up here, 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 and then eventually it starts going down, down, down. That's a recession. And then what happens when you get usually three years receding? You get a depression. The Great Depression was funny because we had a 90% collapse or an 89% in uh, a retracement from the high in 1929, October, to the low in 1932. So 89% loss. In crypto, that happens every three, three to four years, but about every 100 years you get that. In, I'm not a historian, I can't go back to the 1800s. We did have a lot of recessions. Um, I guess, if I were to, to wager the worst recession or depression since the Great Depression was the the South China Sea bubble. Is that, is that how it was? Or is it another bubble? Um, anyway, where everyone invested, Newton invested at the top, and boom, I think, what was it, 1689 or 1720, around there. That was probably the worst bubble since Great Depression so you have to go back another 200 years so yeah we could see a depression the economists try to prevent depressions they know recessions are inevitable every 10 to, 10 to 20 years but it's gonna happen we might get that depression especially with the war it would be amazing like a testament to the world cooperation and global economy to have just a small recession and then recover from it a uh, recession is usually two consecutive quarters of neg negative GDP growth. So a lot of times you just look at the SP 500. Usually if the SP 500 is going down, GDP is going down. Ah, I know, sorry to bore you with that technical talk. So yeah, there's gonna be less Ponzi's. Remember those those meme coins that just went up and down and up and up and up? Uh, GM, GM, GM was famous. Um, Mong mongoose whatever you want it went to like 3,000 X it just doesn't happen anymore. the markets removing this liquidity people are happy with 2x 3x even 0.5x in these meme coins they're taking it out just that tax didn't incentivize people to take it out so early that 10% or 20% buy sell tax but now with the markets retracing it happens so what can you do? There's always going to be plays. There's always going to be Ponzi's. I could talk about Pixie N, uh, Phantom Network, how it went from the mint at 2 ETH. They did an interesting queue thing. So if you beat the queue knowing the ghost link for the whitelist sale that was happening the next day, you could have gotten minted and bypass the queue. Smart guys for writing down all the links. By the way, for future queue mints, if this becomes a trend or if it happens, one in ten times, and you can beat it. Look for that whitelist link to mint. Save all the links and try them all. I mean, you might only have five or ten minutes, but it's worth a shot to make whatever an easy 2x. So it went to 4.69, it wicked, really 4.5, but it wicked to 4.69, then it went down all the way to 1.72, is what I saw on the chart. So a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is the sell-off before the whitelist that gets to mint at 0.35 ETH, 6,000 versus 4,000. So 2.5X increase in supply. You might be insane to think, hey, it's gonna keep going up. You were insane, because it did dip to 1.7, then it peaked again to like 2.7 or so. A lot of people bought at 2.95 ETH, even though it was still traded at 2.65. They just didn't want to be pissed off with failed transactions. Like people are so rich, they're willing to pay a thousand dollar premium so they don't get that annoying failed transaction. That's how stupid the market is sometimes. So the 50 IQ play, a lot of people are saying, yeah, just buy, it's barely gonna dip when the whitelist opens. So what happened, it dipped again to 1.7 right before, or freaking two minutes after the whitelist mid opened, but they were all getting sniped. Anything under two ETH was getting sniped. And then within five minutes, it had broken two ETH. And then another five minutes, it was already at three ETH. I think it ended up going to 3.85, something like that. I don't know if it wicked to four, possibly. So the market is still not understanding the bear 
Oh, he's back in. Um, uh, so, a, a lot of times the market is just ridiculous. These, she these 50 IQ plays are still working. Like, there's no liquidity. Save your liquidity. Don't gamble. But the market wants to gamble because they're addicted to these two X's. They, they saw Moonbirds that went from 2.5 ETH to 40 ETH or 41 ETH. But it's so rare, so they think every other 2 ETH mint is going to do the same. There's just not enough liquidity for that. So, like, remember Pizza Rev and all those revs? Uh, Pizza Rev, uh, Blaze Pizza, LeBron James. He made 100x on his, I think, $250,000 investment. It went to $25 million. It's, it's insane. At the top, I don't know what if, it, if it's contracting now. Maybe it's down to 10 million. Maybe it's even higher. Like, like in the, the normal world, there's all these great investments in bull markets, but bear markets are hard. They're difficult. So, what's the time? 11.30. So what can you do to prepare? Well, you have to have motivation. When you get up in the morning, like, there's expression with the, the Great Depression, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, which basically meant get up, go search for a job even though there weren't any jobs. There was a 25% unemployment rate during the Great Depression. Um, and just keep going. I mean, <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't know if you've heard of it, Sisyphus. God or just a person? I don't know. Anyway, so you get up even though you know it's pointless. You get up just for that that glimmer of hope, like that three percent chance you find your job, three percent chance you make money. We don't want to risk money. If there's only a three percent chance you make money, you don't want to risk the money you have on that. If it's free, just to get up, just energy, maybe a loaf of bread to get you through the day, then sure, why not? But <laughs> if it gets really bad. It's not even worth using up that loaf of bread to get you to travel around town to make it through. Just lie in bed and pray you make it through the depression. You want that? No. So 80% of the world, I'll go back to... Hey. It's not a dog. It's not a dog. Zeus, it's just a, it's a cart. It's a tennis cart. So 80% of the world isn't starving. Do you guys historically always attack that? Because by we haven't had a depression in a while. But that might go back up to or go down to 70%. Sorry, sorry for boring you with this number. But to be starving, to not know where your next meal is gonna come from or when it's gonna come, that's the worst feeling. If you, if you don't have food, if you just think you're going to waste away and die, like if you're doing a fast where you can just have food whenever you want, that's fine. But when you're, the uncertainty of knowing when your next meal is coming, that's scary. So it's totally different being hungry versus fasting, where your mind is prepared for everything, if you have a strong mind. Um, so you got to get up and keep going. Because as soon as you turn it off, as soon as you turn on Netflix and miserable. Have you ever just watched Netflix for like three hours, four hours, five hours, whatever, ten hours, and just been miserable after? I always feel miserable whenever I binge watch something. Why? Because it doesn't accomplish something. I watch something, but unless I unless there's a leaderboard somewhere where I marked it off where I watched something, then what's the point? There's no reward. It's not gonna bring lasting satisfaction. So life isn't about making a ton of money. Everyone thinks it is. This is the the benchmark, the, the recipe, the prototype, or the archetype for having a successful life is making a lot of money and then you'll figure the rest out later. The rest comes out later, right? Um, but it's just hard. It's hard to do that. And the good news is, as long as you're motivated, as long as you get up and set your goals, it doesn't matter if you have money or not. Because setting goals and achieving them is what's 
going to bring overall happiness and well-being and the ability to continue. If you're achieving your goals, um, you're going to be fine. But if you're either not setting goals, you're in a bad place if you're not setting goals. At least if you're setting goals, you're still under the belief that you can achieve those goals, even if they're not achievable. Because you're, you're working your way through, you're not depressed, your mind is focused on achieving that goal, putting all your resources, there's not enough space, because this depression of the mind is the same as depression of the market. What happens when there's belief, there's a belief that the future is hopeless. So you can't have that belief, because then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You don't want that. Just, just tight. Be tight right now. Choose your players better, okay? Don't ape into those three mints. Anyway. But ape, ape was a ape land was a good ape. Anything else? It's risky, dudes. And I'll see you all later. Remember to DM, DM me. Although <laughs> inevitably everyone who's DM'd me wanted money for the most part. So wait, what can I do? Yeah, just DM me if you want money. Sure. Why not? See you all later. The next vlog.